and a good Sunday for everyone that is joining me this morning. I want to talk about a subject this morning that is relevant to every one of us. Because of the situation that we've been surrounded with, it, may, it should make us more aware of uh, the danger for the Christian life. And if you've got your Bibles with you, I'd like you to turn to the book of Corinthians. I'm going to read 2 Corinthians, and we're going to read from verse 12. This is Apostle Paul, he speaks, and he says, that is uh, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 12 to 15. It says about uh, what I do, that I will do, that I may not cut off occasion from them which desire occasion. I mean, he says, I'm, I'm not going to stop because of the evil plan. I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing because of the evil that is around us. And this is quite relevant. I mean, this is written so, so many, many years ago, hundreds of decades, uh, uh, hundreds of centuries ago. Paul is saying that regardless of the evil that is around me, regardless of the situation that, I'm, that we are all facing, every one of us, he said, I will not stop what I'm doing. And what he was doing is preaching the gospel wherever he was. He says, I will not allow the situ situations, the circumstances, whatever, is, whatever I'm dealing with every day, I will not allow that to get me in such a position that I will not be able to preach the gospel. He says that... Uh, that where that where in the glory they may that they may be found even as we are. In other words, he says, "I won't stop preaching the the gospel, preaching the word of God, even though many things come against us." And and I mean, we are facing a global virus, and it's been coming against us like in waves. And uh, that should not stop us from doing what we're supposed to do. This is what Paul is saying. He says because. If we stop what we're doing, those who are on the receiving end of what we're doing will not be blessed. Neither will they receive what we preach. And this is what he's saying. Now, he says, yeah, for such, now this is what he's talking about, what we're facing today as well. For such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no marvel, he says, no, we shouldn't be surprised. He says, because Satan... Uh, for Satan himself is, tr is transformed into an angel of light. Now this is important. Therefore it is no great thing that his ministers, and we're going to look at what his ministers are, uh, also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose, whose end shall be according to their works. Now, to, to, I need to I need to, to read this, the other scriptures as well. That, that will be uh, just a few a few chapters back. That's uh, 2 Corinthians two, verse eight to eight to eleven. Just just uh, go back a few pages while you're in Second Corinthians and go to chapter two, from eight to eleven. It says here, "Wherefore I beseech you, that you would confirm your love towards Him, uh, towards God." For to this end also I did write, that I might know the proof of you. Wherefore, be obedient in all things. To whom you, you, you forgive any things, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything to whom I forgive it, for your sake forgive it, I it, in the person of Christ. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, and we are not ignorant, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So Paul is saying here, one of the biggest, one of the biggest uh, uh, trick of the devil, and we're going to have a look. Uh, yeah, it says yeah. One of the biggest trick of the devil is not be not believers not being in unforgiveness. We need to forgive seventeen times seven, and that's one of the trick of the devil. In John four fourteen five six says John, Thomas said to him, uh, "We do we do not know." Where you go, he's talking to Jesus. But how can we know the way? And just say to him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to me but to the Father but by me. Now, this morning I want to talk about counterfeit. The devil is a counterfeit. And he uses everything that God has made, he perverts and he counterfeits it. And whatever he counterfeits, 
is to destroy. John 10, 10 says, uh, the thief, that was the devil, comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I, Jesus, have come to give you life, and life in more abundant, abundantly. And the devil is constantly challenging God's power upon the earth. He's constantly challenging what God wants to do is is on always uh, always fighting it, and perverting it. And when he was in heaven, he rebelled against God. And he declared, and this is important an important statement that he made. He says he said he said to, he said, I want to exalt my throne above that that of God. Now you can you can read that in the book of Ezekiel or the book of Isaiah. And you'll, hear, you'll see the whole story there. But he says, I want to exalt my throne above that of God. In other words, he wanted to be higher than God. And God had none of that. And we, we read in the book of Revelation that there was a war in heaven. And the devil fell. And Jesus, Jesus himself said to his disciples, I saw the devil fell like, like, like lightning to the earth. So, here we have the devil fighting with God to take that place of authority, to take that place of power, to take that place of, of being superior to everybody else. But the Bible says that uh, the Bible says that sin was found in his heart and he was cast out of the of heaven. He was cast out. And the book of Revelation says that and a third, a third of the angelic host that was in heaven fell with him. Now he had already perverted a third of the angels. Wow. He was so convincing because uh, according to the Bible, he was the, the, the archangel. Uh, he was uh, the leader of the worship. He was uh, the, the most anointed sheriff, the Bible calls it. Now, he was yet a high-ranking authority, but he wanted more. He wanted to be above, of, above God. And uh, so there was war in heaven, and he was cast out. And those who, are, who, those who had, he had uh, perverted... And the Bible says a third of the angelic host, those he had perverted, fell with him. Now, I perverted, Lu his name was Lucifer in heaven. I perverted Lucifer. After the fall, he became Satan. The perverted angels became demons. And us, a perverted Christian, becomes a backslider. So now, now you're, looking, you're looking at this, and when, when the book of Visions tells us that we are not fighting against flesh and blood, they are, is, the, 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 the writer is, is showing us that we are fighting against the, those forces that fell from heaven. We are fighting against a third of the angelic host, which are now called demons. Now, they are powerless. Remember that. They are powerless because they've lost the anointing. But they are, the devil is a deceiver. The devil is a deceiver. And ever since he had, he had challenged God's authority and he was thrown out of heaven, he fell on the earth, the Bible says. And have a look around you from the history way back one nation always wants to dominate another nation. A country wants to dominate another country. There's always that seeking after more power. Once you've gained power, you want more power. And you want authority. And you want to rule over this. And you want to rule over that. And this country wants to be a ruling country over the, uh, the next. And if he can't rule you by overpowering you, he makes that nation... Uh, in, in, it takes that nation into slavery and then there's war. So we see that through the ages, through history, I mean, all, all, there's not one continent upon this planet that has not been in war with another, another country, another land, another nation. And you can never look, and uh, th that war still raises on even today. This nation is upset with this nation. Now they go to war because this nation doesn't want to submit to this nation. And every one nation is always seeking to rule something else. That's a spirit of the of the seed that uh, that is in Satan, and he's perverting nations. He's perverting leaders to 
with lies and deceit so that they can, they've got that mentality, we need to dominate something. And then it goes down to society. In society, you've got ranks. You've got the rich people, you've got the middle class people, you've got the poor people. And the rich people want to dominate the, the, the middle class. The middle class want to dominate the poor people. And, and so on and so on. Uh, it's not like 100%, but it's, it's, it, the, the spirit is there. There's always a difference. If it's not in color, it's in society rank. And we see that. And all these things, the Bible keeps teaching us that we are one in Christ. Regardless of color, creed, nation, country, we are still one in Christ. If, you are, if you're a brother and sister, then you are a brother and sister. Regardless which language you talk, regardless which color you are, regardless which land you stay in, we are brothers and sisters through Christ. Uh, when we start separating ourselves from the love of God, we fall into the deception and start wanting to be better than somebody else. There's always that competitive spirit around around everybody. Uh, and and you, you find an in, that in churches as well. One church wants to be better than the next. One church wants to have more people than the next. One church wants to have the best instrument than the next. One church wants to have the best preacher than the next, and, and so on. There's always that competitive spirit. And we are missing the point. We are missing out because we are ignorant. And, and, and Paul says that we should not be ignorant of the devil's schemes. He warns us about that. He said, don't be ignorant of the devil's schemes. Uh, the devil initiates deceit. Understand it. The devil initi initiates deceit in people. And people start doubting. People start, start being envious. People start being jealous. People start... Uh, wanting and, deser and and wanting something else, and and, and we fall into the the, the deception, uh, and the devil is painting a picture of the seat, and he counterfeits. I mean, look look at this. He, he, back to that one scripture that says here, yeah, uh, verse fourteen, Second Corinthians eleven. He says here, yeah, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And then Paul talks about the false prophet, and that's in the church, not, not outside. So, so even within the church ranks, the devil has been trans deceiving people, and some people that are wanting to, and this is again a place of dominance, it's a place of having more power than the next person. In other words, a, a man, a person, not a man, a person that, wants to dominate others will make himself of more importance. And that's why Paul calls them false prophets. Because a prophet of God, when, when you encounter a, a real prophet of God, you'll see how committed this person is, how modest this person is, are submissive this person is. But when you encounter a prophet of the devil, a false prophet, as Paul mentions, you'll see how dominant they want to be. How they want to just put their foot across, you know what, I, I, I am the prophet of God, and I'm going to speak this, and you have to trust me, you, you have no options. What I say is law. You'll, you'll find that. Where Paul again says to us that we must test every spirit. Now this is not outside there. This is within the church environment. This is within the church of God, within the saints, within the believers. We have to test the spirit. When somebody comes to you and says, this is what the Lord says, and wah, 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 wah. You need to understand, all right, well, this is what the man says. But now, it does not it does not witness with me. Uh, I, I do not understand this prophecy. I don't think it's related to me. Then Paul says to us, take that prophecy and put it onto the shelf, and wait. If that prophecy is from God, then it shall be revealed to you. Now, I've learned through my years years of service, I've, I've learned that uh, when people have prophesied over my life, most of them have 
there was a witness within me. I, I, I was praying about the subject, or I was asking God about certain things, or I was asking God where, 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 what direction to go, or what to do, how to do it, and stuff like that. And then, not not too long after that, there would be a prophecy in the church. There would even be a prophet coming and saying, "This is what the Lord is showing me," and this and this and this and this, and it would witness with my spirit. This is, and nobody knew that because it was within within my own uh, environment that I prayed to God without telling anybody. I would witness to that. And this is what God says. You must test the spirit. That was, that's what the person told you, the false prophet. Or let me put it this way. Does, did the prophet come to you and say something that witnessed with you? God will not bring anything upon you that you are either not sensitive to, aware of, or been demanding about, or asking about. So you, you must be uh, be careful here. Because... Uh, because uh, uh, in the book of Ephesians, it says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers, rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual weaknesses in high places. So we need to be vigilant. We need to be alert. We need to be sensitive to what we confront every day. Because remember, as a believer, you you believer, I'm a believer, and all the people that uh, go to churches and stuff like that, let us not be blindsided by the devil's lies. If if, if you have a, a if you if you if you go to to a church, and you've got the time to go to church, and you're a member of that church, and you are committed to that church, and you are willing to work in that church, don't let the devil deceive you to do something else at the time where you should be in church. That's a great deception. And people are falling for that trick. Keeping yourself busy at the time where God wants you in the place where you are called. Or in the place where He wants you to work. I mean, if, you, if you're a working person and you're getting a salary and you've got a boss, even if you're working for yourself, you, you know you have to work at least eight hours a day this is, a, this is a contract. I, mean, I was working for 42 years in a, in a, in a steel engineering factory. And <laughs> my time was from 7 o'clock to 4 o'clock. And it doesn't matter what happens. Unless, I, uh, unless I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sick, unless uh, somebody has died and you can take a, a one or two day off, you're not going to stay away from that work. Even if, if your brother tells you, let's say, I want to come and visit. And you're like, Sorry, I'm at work. You know, you say, oh, well, okay, I'll, I'll stay away from work. I'll, you can go and visit and we can chat. You would never do that. But why are we doing it with the church? Why are we doing it with the church? Why do we keep ourselves busy in the time where we should be assembled? As, as Paul says, do not neglect the assembly of the saints. Yet we do that. Yet we do, we do that. We, we find things to keep ourselves occupied in a time where God has a, a, an appointed time for him and you to encounter, to meet, and so God can talk to you, God can bless you, God can uh, see your faith, see your obedience, see your, see your submissive spirit. We are, we are being deceived by the devil because he wants to dominate your life. He wants to dominate your Christianity. Why? Because if he can work through you, He's got a little bit of power because you've got power because of the blood of Jesus, because of the word of God, because of the spirit of God. You've got power and the devil wants to be, use you, he wants to use you as an instrument. So you can have a sense of the power that he seeks after. One Peter five eight, he says here, he tells us, be sober. Be vigilant. Now look at what he says. Because your adversary, the devil, he calls it. He says your adversary, the devil, uh, goes around like a roaring lion. As a, as a roaring lion, not like one, as one. He imitates this growl that he goes around and says, yeah, I'm, all, I'm all strong and everything. No, no, no. He imitates the, the, the lion. He says, as, uh, he goes around as a roaring lion. Uh, and a, a lion's roar is to announce his dominance over everything. I heard 
I heard a, a, a bit of a joke. Uh, this lion goes into the forest, goes Arr! to the to the small antelope and says, "Who is the king of the jungle?" And the antelope shakes, it, "Oh, you are, you are, you are." And he go he goes to the giraffe and says, Arr! "Who is the king of the uh, of the jungle?" And the, uh, the giraffe says, "Oh, you are, you are." And he goes to the elephant and he goes, Arr! "Who is the king of the jungle?" And the elephant looks at him with his trunk, grabs the lion and hits him, pop, 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 pop. And throws him there on the other side, and the line just goes like oh, this, and he goes, "Okay, you don't have to be upset because you don't know the answer." <laughs> but the devil, the uh, Paul, Paul, Peter says to us, the adversary, the devil, the Satan, goes around as a rolling lion. Look at that. He says, "Seeking whom he may devour." Not seeking to devour, seeking who, seeking who he may devour. In other words, he's got to have something that allows him to devour whatever you're doing. And that something is that is, is you believing his lies. He deceives the nations, he deceives the leaders that they need, oh, they need to dominate this, this country, and this, the, the, all these leaders are getting at all. Uh, stirred up and everything, and they decide, let's go to war with this country because we need to dominate that that country. And they fall into de deception. And in, in, in church circles, you'll have, you'll have people in the church that are developing envy, developing jealousy because of the devil's lies, and they, they want... Or they want to play in the band, or they they want to, they want to be elders, or they want to be the, they want to bring the word, and they want to be this, and they want to be that. There's always that desire to want something, not allowing God to promote. The Bible says, God will promote you. Humble yourself before the Lord. God will God will promote you. Be found in the in, in, be found in the compound of your calling according to the word of God, and God will exalt you in due time. So let us be alert. Let us, sober means clear-minded. No, many people say, uh, uh, be sober. They think, oh, we should not drink. Uh, you should not drink. But that sober means being clear-minded. To be clear-minded. In other words, we must be vigilant. We must be alert and be sensitive. And we need to be Walk, have a closer walk with God so that we can discern the onslaught and the deceit and the lies of Satan. Because when we when we sense the onslaught of the devil, then we can react. And Peter says, resist the devil and he shall flee from you. So my, my brothers and my sisters, this is the word of the Lord this morning. The church, the Christians, the believers must become more vigilant, more alert, more, more on their toes moving forward. Because at the end times, not evil will, will increase, but God's glory will increase even more. But we need to be very, very vigilant to the onslaught of the devil and we need to resist him by the word of God by the blood of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit be sober be vigilant in the name of Jesus Shalom